Good morning. Welcome to all of you as we gather for worship today. Welcome those who are joining via our live stream. It's the fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. We have been gathering together as a family of faith around the theme, Holy Ground. We give thanks for the opportunity to be in this holy ground, this time of worship today. Uh, today's a special day for us as a congregation for a number of different reasons. One of them is that we are receiving a group of new members today at Zion. We're excited to welcome these folks into the life and ministry of this congregation. We'll call them up and uh, say all the right things later on in worship. And after worship, I hope that you get to uh, continue to greet them and get to know them and uh, do so over the course of the coming uh, weeks as well. So welcome to these new members. Welcome to uh, the old members. Welcome to anybody who's visiting for the first time today. Uh, all are welcome here to uh, join together in this time of worship. In our prayers as we gather, we remember all those on our congregation prayer list and uh, also especially those who have been or are in the paths of storms, which may in fact be us right now. Um, so we pray for God's safety and God's mercy to be among those affected by recent tornadoes, um, for God to come to the aid of all those in need this day. I want to make sure you read cover to cover your edition of tonight, uh, today's announcement page, the Zion Sunday Record. It has lots of great information that uh, answer questions I know you really want to know, like, what's our schedule for Holy Week and Easter? Ah. It's right here on the page, so make sure you read about the opportunities to worship on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter morning. Or questions like, hey, is there another cleanup day coming? Yes, there is. Flip it over and you can read all about it. Yesterday we had a wonderful group who came to help clean up, set up, and uh, begin to organize our other buildings for our anticipated move back over there. Many thanks to that group of heroes who were here yesterday. Let's give them a round of applause. They know who they are. Uh, if you weren't able to be here next Saturday, we'll be back at it again at 9 a.m. over in the other building. And then lastly, you might be wondering, hey, is there an Easter egg hunt this year? There is, and you can read all about it there. We're thankful for Margaret Sox for hosting our annual Easter egg hunt coming up on April 1st. Not a joke, not only for fools. Um, today, I want to invite Russell Cleckley to come up to the microphone. Russell has some special uh, information to share with us about the way that we as a congregation are looking forward to caring for our... I'm talking slow, Russell, so you can get there by the time I'm done. <laughs> Looking forward to caring for our grounds and facilities, the great gifts God has given us for years to come. Excuse me while I clean my glasses. Yeah, I've reached that point. Well, good morning. Don't worry, it's going to be short. Um, so, like many of you, I am very excited to see the progress that's being made on the renovation of our sanctuary next door. Um, this, this has been made possible by the generous giving by many of you and friends of Zion through our Grow and Renew campaign. And I'm sure that everyone is excited and anxiously awaiting the time that we can come together as a congregation and worship in that space again. And it is getting close. And honestly, I think this is just another example of what can be accomplished when we all come together and work for a common cause. And I think this is very exciting. So as we look forward to coming together and that date, we're also planning on ways that we're going to care for the facilities um, and the grounds in the future. Now recently I helped lead a planning group whose task was to determine the best plan for our congregation to take care of our indoor and outdoor spaces here at Zion. Now the group has done some really good work um, and we now have a plan in place that will involve professional landscaping, professional janitorial services, as well as a staff person to help coordinate all the use and upkeep of the grounds and the facilities. Now I believe this facility as a grounds care plan offers us the best way to take care of our church campus now and for years to come. 
Now this plan will come with some additional costs beyond we, what we have traditionally budgeted for these needs. And this is where you have an opportunity to help. So we are inviting all members of Zion to help us put our new facility and grounds care plan into action. And, and we are calling this a facilities and ground care plan because it's kind of like a three-legged stool. We've got the landscaping, which is being you know professionally done now. We've got the janitorial, which we have a service that starts here in another week or so. And then we have the staff person, a paid staff person that will coordinate all the repairs, um, you know, everything else needs to be done, contracts, all things like that, opening and closing, setting up, tear down for the buildings. So it's really a three-piece plan, not just an individual part. So, so like, and having said that, we, we're inviting all members of Zion to help with this new facility and grounds care plan, help to put this into action. And to fund this plan, the congregation needs to receive an additional $450 per week in offering. Um, now this is beginning in April and for the remainder of 2023. That's just $450 a week between all of us. Now the planning group that I was a part of and also our church council that made very important decisions um, along the way in this plan, um, we've all been asked as leaders to make some early commitments toward that goal. And I'm happy to share with you today that we've already received commitments of $260 per week towards that $450 a week goal. So yeah, we're over halfway there already. So, so now I'm looking to ask each and every one of you if you could be a part of this plan. Each commitment from you to give an additional amount of regular offering per week um, through the end of the year will move us towards our goal and fund this important work. Um, so ushers, We'll hand out these cards. If you can say yes to this, op oh, sorry, there's the back of the card. If you can say yes to this opportunity and increase your weekly giving by an, am an amount, then we would ask you to complete this card and either put it in the plate, offering plate today, next week. If you're more comfortable, send Julie an email and say, hey, I can increase my giving weekly by X amount. And you'll go on record there. So, I mean, it's not a, you know, it's what you're used to seeing. So anyway, I'm excited about this plan, and I, I, we're prepared to put this into place, and I hope you will consider joining me in supporting this as we take care of Zion, our grounds, and our facilities so that we can enjoy it now and in many, many years to come. And, you know, and one, one quick thing too, I, being a lifelong member here, I've seen it go from, you know, what it was to what it is now, and I still call this the new building. But, you know, we moved into this in, what, 05, I think it was? So new isn't really new. So it, everything takes upkeep. So prayerfully consider. Thanks, Russell. Thanks for your leadership, for the leadership of the various teams that have been working on this. I would tell you something exciting from my own personal life. Last month, my wife and I paid off the last of our student loans. It took a while. We are excited to redirect some of the money that we would normally be sending to a student loan collection agency uh, to help take care of these grounds and facilities for years to come. So I invite you to think about the ways that you might redirect some of the money you spend on things you like or things you don't like uh, to be a part of this effort. Well, once again, welcome to worship today. Let's uh, spend a moment preparing our hearts and minds for worship now as we receive this morning's prelude.
we stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave Jesus the Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and renews you in the Spirit's power. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Can you guys have an arm wrestling match to figure out who can assist with communion? Craig, peace be with you. Peace be with you. All right, would you, Craig, would you be willing to assist with communion? Sure. Okay. David? I've got Craig to do it, but you can keep an eye on the refill for wine if you don't mind doing that. So we'll give you a wine. Good to see you. How you doing? Peace be with you. How you doing? Good. Hey, Ali. Peace. Peace be with you. Hey, Renee. Welcome. Peace be with you. How are you? Good, how are you? Good.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for today's children's message right up here at our prayer ground. morning guys I see lots of friends coming still all right we'll give them one more minute all right so I have a question what is this a cross who died on the cross and what happened after he died on the cross he went he rose again so this cross reminds us of that. But did you know Jesus is not the only one who rose from the dead in the Bible? Yeah, there's somebody named Lazarus. And that is a story that we can take with us as a reminder that not only did Jesus come back to take care of us, but Jesus gives us new life. So Lazarus was dead, and his sisters were so worried because they tried and tried to get Jesus to come and heal him, but Jesus took his time. Everybody thought, oh, he died. I guess he's not going to come back. But Jesus knew that if you just had the faith like he did in God, that God can do amazing, amazing things. And he went to the tomb where Lazarus was and said, Lazarus, come out. And guess what? Lazarus came out. And that is a miracle that Jesus did before he went and died on the cross for us. And in just a few weeks, two weeks actually, we will get to hear the wonderful story of Jesus dying and rising for us. All right, let's say a little prayer real fast. <clears throat> Dear God, thank you for giving us new life and reminding us that God can do amazing things. Amen. All right. Let's go upstairs and we're going to come back real soon today because we've got some really special things going on in church. Let us read responsibly together Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from Romans. 
To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Well, one last time, we venture into one of these long gospel readings, these stories about holy ground encounters between Jesus and those he ministered to in the gospels. Each week, as we gather around holy ground themes, we are hearing about the ways Jesus moved people from where they were to where they needed to be. Nicodemus toward understanding, the woman at the well toward worthiness, the man born blind, back into community. This week's story is about a lot of different people. It's a story about Lazarus, who became ill and died. It's about Lazarus's sisters, Mary and Martha, who were stuck in grief and the other bystanders who gathered around for the time of mourning. And it's about what Jesus, the Lord of life, did for all of these. But the heart of the story, the problem, is the problem of death. The death of Lazarus affects everyone we meet in this Bible passage, and though they are all at different places along the way to the grave. They are all standing in the shadow of death on that shadowy ground. Can you picture them there? That's where Jesus finds them. So let's hear now this story from the Gospel of John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. 
Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, And the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, 
his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. All those who gathered at the grave of Lazarus thought Jesus was coming into a place of sorrow. But it was they who had arrived at an encounter with Jesus and his power over death. Jesus didn't deny what a difficult reality death was for all of them. Jesus entered into their grief wept with them and pointed to a greater hope. And then Jesus went to the tomb and called Lazarus out, brought him back to life, returned him to the way of living. That's the great miracle here, the power Jesus has over death. And in demonstrating that power, Jesus moved all those he was ministering to. Lazarus was in the tomb, and Jesus moved him out. Mary and Martha were in grief, and Jesus must have moved them to joy. The bystanders were mourning. Jesus moved them to believe in him. Jesus moved them all from the shadowy ground of death to the holy ground of life. With his word of hope and power, Jesus spoke in this place of death, saying, Take away the stone. You will see the glory of God. Lazarus. Come out. There's more than just a little hint of Easter in this story, isn't there? Jesus brought Lazarus back to this life, not the same as the resurrection life Jesus will rise to. But the grave, the grave clothes, the women at the tomb, sounds a little familiar. And it's clear in this gospel story that Jesus is making waves, that God is stirring and the world is changing. For if the dead won't even stay in their tombs, then everything has changed. I'm going to go out on a limb and say most of us have stood at the grave of someone we love and have lost. Some of us feel the weight of those losses even now. We are a lot like Mary and Martha in that sense, hearts filled with hurt and questions and if onlys. And let's face it, we are like Lazarus too. There's a tomb on the horizon for each of us. But the tomb is the place where Jesus met Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Which means that Jesus can meet us there too. Jesus does meet us there, we can be sure. For Jesus doesn't deny the reality of our loss, the problem of our death. But he comes into it to grieve with us, to speak a word of hope, and to defeat death. 
We've been talking about holy ground during this holy season, and, and of all the places to say is holy, you'd think that maybe a tomb is too much. But that's not too much for God. This is what we believe. It's in fact what we say, even at funerals, there's this prayer. We, we pray it at the graveside every time we lay someone to rest. And it goes, holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you have destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting places of all your people. Jesus has moved us from the shadow of death to the holy ground of life. And so we live. We live this life of hope and promise and joy. And we rejoice at the signs of life we see around us today. New members, first communion class, opportunities to care for the gifts God has given us. And these people gathered here on this holy ground of worship, who from here go forth to bring Christ's word of life to all. Amen.
Friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. I'll invite them to come forward as their names are called. Lisa Bergenbaum, who we received by affirmation of faith. Brian and Renee Higgins, Rhiannon and Hannah, Gabriel, Phoebe, Sean, and Ethan by transfer from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Rocky Point, New York. Wes and Christy Jacobs, Brantley and Corbin by affirmation of faith. Cameron Lamb by transfer from Easley First Baptist Church in Easley, South Carolina. Stephen and Laura Malonis, Russell and Adeline by affirmation of faith. Patrick and Chesson Merritt, Riley and Evans by transfer from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Columbia, and Lorraine Parts and Evelos by affirmation of faith. I'm going to invite you to remain standing, congregation, so that with the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now the congregation may be seated. Dear friends, in baptism we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I ask you, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people as members of Zion Lutheran Church? If so, I invite you all to answer all at once. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life of Christ? If so, then all together, all at once, I invite you to say, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do. Let us pray. We give you thanks for these new members, O oh God, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we welcome into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in service to others. Bring us at length to that day when all your children will be one, and you will be all in all. Amen. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We welcome you in my baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. All right. Before we clap, I do a few introductions here. This is Cameron Lamb, who's married to longtime Zion member Chandler Hendricks Lamb, and this is their son Charlie. Uh, this is Renee Higgins and some of her children, and some aren't here today. Uh, we're excited to have all of them. This is Lisa Bergenbaum, who's uh, Renee's sister, and this is uh, Lorraine Partsonevelos, who's Lisa and Renee's mom. So, some of you who are related to a lot of people in the congregation, we got a little competition going on here. <laughs> This is Christy Jacobs and her children Brantley and Corbin. Their husband Wes can't be here today, but he's excited about getting involved. This is uh, Laura Malonis and her children Russell and Adeline. Laura's husband Stephen is on call this morning and uh, looking forward to being back with us. Laura and I 
our cousins. <laughs> More competition. And last but certainly not least, this is Patrick and Chesson Merritt and their daughters, Riley and Evans. We've got some gifts for all of you. I'm going to pass those up as we all welcome them with our applause. forward to visiting with all of you and welcome you further during our fellowship time after worship today. You can return to your seat. Thanks so much. We stand. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. God of power and might, you have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven all your people, deepen our partnerships with other people of faith. Bless the work of missionaries and all who share the good news of Jesus. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore places in need of healing. Bless those who plant and tend the land. Make us all gentle stewards of the gifts you give. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You redeem the world and its peoples. Free those bound by oppression or struggle. Breathe peace into nations stuck in war. Raise up leaders who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You weep when we weep. Be present with those who grieve or who are troubled by illness. Deliver us from depths of despair and free us from the worries that bind us. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and all we name to you now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your spirit of life dwells in our com church community. Bless, bless each of us, young and old, new members and longtime members, those who lead out front and those who patiently serve in unseen ways. Help us to be a place of welcome and a place of holiness for all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Keep us united with them in praise as we worship Jesus, the Messiah, who is coming to the world. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
we stand. Let us pray, God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. When we are in your presence, we stand on holy ground. Together with all earth and heaven and all your creatures who stand before you, we give you thanks and praise. Long ago, you sent Moses to lead your people from bondage into freedom and celebrated with Miriam a song of deliverance on the shore of the sea. In your word, you showed your people a way of holiness, and through the prophets, you called them to return to a life grounded in your mercy. When the time was right, you sent Jesus, your Son, to walk our dusty roads, to wash our muddy feet, and to give his life for all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all the earth. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin. Renew us in strength that we may walk in the way of Jesus our Lord. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. As Jesus has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Amen.
we stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. May God, who meets us here in holiness, give you peace to dwell in hope. May Jesus, who encounters us in word, water, and the wonder of this meal, grant you love for life in his name. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who is our strength and guide, go with you as you serve the Lord. Amen. in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God.